had to do this exhibit. <laughs> it's our first exhibition of photography and the processes that are used in these images came to peak use during the Civil War. And one of the great generals of the Civil War was born in the house next door, William Tecumseh Sherman. I'm doing a lot of things with the exhibition. I'm not teaching people about photography, but I'm showing people a variety of methods of producing photographs. So photographs do a couple of things. One is that they give you an image of a person or a place or a thing. And within that, they're a time capsule. So they will show you a style of clothing. They'll show you a style of transportation. But then if you look at the imagery more closely, you start to denote class systems or you denote uh, conditions. Uh, I was asked to find contemporary artists working with the techniques that were presented in Scott's half of the exhibition, um, people who are still working with these 170-year-old techniques. Uh, behind me is a, a piece, even though it's 27 separate um, objects, uh, but it's, it's thought of as a piece by an artist named Kelly Anderson Staley. Um, these are collodion on metal, um, more commonly known as a tintype. She's mostly known for her portrait photography, and I fell in love with her abstractions. Um, and she put this together, um, we worked on it over the course of the summer, she shipped it out, and she's a resident of Houston. And uh, the, the days that we were installing this, her house was consumed and she put her children on a raft and escaped to a friend's house with her husband. Um, and so this work, which she titled at the time, Flood Tide, uh, prophetically, has become uh, uh, something positive in her life because it's hanging here and being enjoyed by everyone while she's dealing with rebuilding her life in, in Houston. A lot of um, people who are not photographers don't understand why would you choose to do something that's so labor-intensive and for some of these artists that's precisely why they want to do it because it is different from digital technologies in that they're making an object. Not pressing a button, not sitting at a computer, but they're making something with their hands and they're making something that's coded, they're making something that they can hold, and it's also something that's unique. Yeah, so why don't you have a seat? So uh, what I have installed here is a project I've been calling the operating room, uh, which is uh, this very uh, 16 by 20 large format camera that I constructed out of I don't know, some old uh, darkroom equipment and a doctor's exam table, and there's a bed frame in there too. Um, and this uh, chair I constructed also out of sort of found materials um, that has a head restraint, uh, much like you might find in a 19th century studio. The name The Operating Room comes from um, doing some research on 19th century photography. Oftentimes uh, photographers were called camera operators, hence their studio would be called an operating room. And I kind of found that really fascinating. Um, and kind of use that to kind of, um, to riff on, I guess. One nice thing about this process, uh, though it is slower than we're used to, you can see results relatively quickly, um, within, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, if I, you know, go and process it right away, you can see the results fairly fast. Um, it's kind of like shooting a 19th century Polaroid or something that you're manually processing because the plate um, that you get at the end is what was in the camera, just like a Polaroid. I think kind of what my part of this exhibit uh, kind of makes it all real, I think, uh, perhaps to a viewer. Um, it's an, an opportunity to kind of see how some of these images were made, both um, work on the contemporary side and on the 19th century side of the exhibit. Well, I would hope people would, would recognize that um, the history of photography is rich artistically, but to find out that photographers are still using those techniques to say something about their lives today, um, and that that's still a viable thing to do.